Anyway, did it through the... What was I going to say? Oh, yeah. I did it through the pandemic. Got sad during the pandemic. Stopped. And now we're back. Great. <laughs> and welcome back to Everything But The Scores with Danny Jollis. My name is Danny Jollis. Today is May 31st, 2022. Um, same things I say every time. It's boring this time. I do... I will say today might have been the most suggestions for stories I've ever gotten. And it really felt good. It really felt nice. Thank you, everybody who sent them in. I'm doing very few of them. But they were great <laughs> suggestions. <laughs> And a couple people guessed the first one. A lot, a couple, two people were like this story, and I was like, "Yeah, for sure." Uh, but thank you. Subscribe, rate, comment, tell a friend. Can't recommend enough. We have a lot uh, of uh, much, much more people listening than watching. I just want to say, check out that YouTube. It's a good time. I also need to be better about posting the shorts, and that's on me. But for what it's worth, check it out. Uh, get involved. Message me. Can't stress enough. We are open to a new theme song. <gasps> Uh oh. Uh oh. I'm a songwriter. Hello. Get in there. Get in there. We're open to a new theme song. Wait. So is it's a submissions only? Like, how does this work? You would submit it, and okay. then I would for sure do it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. Uh, no, I literally will go home and make this right now. Let's go. You I mean, just let me what points the theme to hit. Song by the time this episode comes out. <laughs> okay. I'll be so pumped. Okay. Uh, Great. I'm in. Go and on. I've also had like three shots of espresso, so I'm fired up. Let's go. <laughs> but before we get to you, we get to you. Yes. Joining us to the side, <gasps> our co-host, the best and brightest, a man <laughs> who I completely <laughs> fucked on Memorial Day. Ladies and gentlemen, no a cop for everybody. No, no, no fuck you, kind soul. No. I think, I think... <laughs> I've noticed this about us is we we both think about we're like oh fuck I'm so sorry and that's just like our baseline so I think if you read back our text conversations it would be so funny yes. like because you come with the information and the apology is like I'm so sorry here is the thing and you're like oh oh I think both of us leave with I'm sorry both, yeah every single text we've sent to each other is like I'm so sorry can you be here at this time you're like I'm so sorry I wasn't here at this time like, it's, like, it's just sorry 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 and that's classic sports energy. I love that. That's yeah. the classic type it's of great. sports guys. But that's what we do. We change the game. Joining <laughs> me. Sometimes we have a guest. Sometimes we don't. Today we almost didn't have a guest. Because <laughs> my guest dropped. And I went, oh no. And then little did I know I had a neighbor. Hey. Who basically <laughs> lives around the corner from me. Who was like, yeah, I can come there. Uh, <laughs> you might know her. Or not. The reboot of Mad TV. You might know her from the donors on LOL Network that I also was a part of. <laughs> you might know her as a friend. She is currently the self-proclaimed tromedy queen of Hollywood. Ladies and gentlemen, Carla Craig, everybody. Hi. Thank you for having me. Hi. Uh, we did the donors together. We did. A show on LOL Network. Mm-hmm. And because I was like, I remember it being a very... <laughs> So they did this like premiere for the donors. It was a great show. It was actually oh, genuinely great. Now I know what you're going to talk about. The I think you, you'll because there were a couple of moments that happened in there. The one that made me laugh out loud and I felt potentially ruined the entire thing for everybody mm -hmm. was it was a day after it had come out. Okay. And they were like, guys, we're so proud of what we put out. It was actually very good. You were phenomenal in it. Thank you. Uh, we're so proud of what we put out. This was so great. And we just want to announce we already have a million views. And I laughed out loud when they said that, and then I felt terrible. But it was one of the most insane numbers I've ever heard that was for sure not true. And they, no, because it, we didn't have a million views. No chance we had a million views. No, there's no way. How could we possibly have a million views? I don't know one person who's ever heard of it. No. And I said it with love because it is a very good show. And Better there was than, no marketing or promo. No marketing or promo. There was no, no. way. How, I literally wanted, and in a day, guys, and they said it's so straight faced. I just remember yeah. up there, guys. We have a million we have views. We a million views. And I was like, that just where? be true. Where? <laughs> and how, we said, how, where? How is that humanly possible? <laughs> LOL Network. And I, I think it was only on the website and on true. Facebook Watch. Like, and and I think that each each video probably had like 5,000 views the day after it came out. Oh. So, five, eight, six, wait, it was six episodes or eight episodes. It was, I don't know how many. Yeah. I think it was six or something. 5,000 views. I'm not a mathematician, but that doesn't equal 1 million. Oh, it's also... I can bust out the calculator. Yeah, I no, I think, yeah, that's, I, think yeah. right. I think it's like in the 38K range. It was so absurd. And it's also like such a clear like fake numbers thing where like obviously LL Network was like, we have this many views. And it's like, you're just buying views. We all know what you're doing. How can you say this to our faces? We're like, it's no problem with putting it... Like, I don't understand why people feel the need to do that. It's like, 
it's a great thing to put it out. Yeah. It made a great thing. I was, I genuinely remember like watching the episodes and being like, I was a very small part, but I was like, this is funny. Yeah, it was it's funny. A good thing we it made. was cute. You yeah. were great. Like, Thank you. There was a lot of things to like about it. <laughs> and, <laughs> and they one said that million views. to our faces. And I was like, why? You're lying. I was like, for sure, lying. What do we even <laughs> pretend? I mean, it's not even in the boat realm. But um, and I don't know if it's even still online, but if it is, LOL Network. LOL Network, the donors. Check out the donors. We're both in it. We're both in it. <laughs> brief appearances. You do a lot. Yeah. I'm like more brief. But I have a couple. I, I was so excited when I showed up that day and you were there. Yeah. Oh, we were so <laughs> oh, pumped. Yeah, my we, friend. We met, I mean, like when I first moved to LA. Doing stand-up, right? Yeah. Was it at Adrian's house? Mm-hmm. That was my first time doing stand-up. Ever. Wow. And I, that was, I was 21. Wow. I'm 30 now. Can you believe? I've known you for nine years. That's crazy. That's crazy. Because it was a lot. I remember it was like one of the first people I met. And then like, we've just always kind of like. And had you, you had just moved here as well? Just moved here. Oh my I'd God. I've been doing stand for a while, but had just, yeah. like, just moved here. It was your first backyard show. It probably. was. Little did I know my entire life and career would yeah. be in backyards. <laughs> oh, I now, it was the first of many. Little did I know I would someday produce a special that was entirely not in comedy clubs. And <laughs> continued onward, that is my favorite thing. Wow. So, yeah, it's been quite the journey. Um, but yeah, it was great. Uh, yeah, the donors was wild. Man, TV, we talked about those things. Did you play sports as a kid? Uh, I played tennis. My dad okay. is a tennis coach, USPTA oh. certified, Ooh. and he. Um, they don't give those things out. No, 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 no. He worked very hard. Um, so he was the coach and ran the tennis uh, club at my hometown's country club of Coral Springs. I'm from a, a place called Coral Springs, Florida, Love that. suburb in South Florida. It's like. I feel like a nicer. It's like near Boca, but like it's Boca adjacent. It's okay. not as nice. It's like the suburb, like sure. middle class version. Um, mm-hmm. And so it's like kind of like, you know, like Ariana Grande's from Boca. Right. I'm from Coral Springs. Sure. Right. So I am mm-hmm. the, you know, they did print on Coral Springs Life magazine that I'm the comedy queen of Coral Springs. Hey, let's go. You know, like so. I've never been acknowledged one time by my hometown. But we're here to talk about sports. And I just want to say they've never acknowledged me one time. It, they could. I am livid about it. This could be the episode. I've yelled about this so many times, but DC Sports has Pat fucking Sajak <laughs> intro so many things. And I'm like, and Wolf Blitzer are there too. And I'm yeah. like, hey, can we, I'm out here wearing DC Sports stuff all the time. You're repping. I wore a Capitals tie when I did Late Night. I've made a thousand references to DC Sports in my stand-up, including this current one. We'll have a reference. Like, they just never even look in my direction how much more can you do i don't i really don't know what more i can do no you're at your breaking point well uh to reiterate from a last previous episode uh hashtag dj for dc oh, that's right spam mm-hmm. twitter and everything with that and uh we will get their attention i will be okay doing that. i'm yeah. so i'm it drives me up a wall nobody pays attention <laughs> right. so you play tennis as a result I'm oh assuming. yeah sorry i was uh talking about how i was the comedy queen of coral springs well but i we're think here, when i started yelling about, about dc sports, sports i fully interrupted yeah. you go on you're good yeah so um my hometown coral springs my dad was the pro at country club of coral springs so it was like I grew up, I was either at theater camp or tennis camp. So it was like, I would kind of ping pong back and forth Mm -hmm. at the Coral Springs Center for the Arts or the Country Club of Coral Springs, which were less than a mile from each other, right? So um, I did grow up doing, uh, playing tennis and then um, probably around college age, I did actually go and teach tennis at a theater camp. Okay. So we cross pollinated, it was like, yeah, a big crossover Mm -hmm. um, moment. Uh, So that was 2011, I worked at a camp called French Woods Festival for the Performing Arts. What a classic camp name. Yeah. What a down the middle (laughs) camp name. Adam Levine went there. It's always a place in woods. Yeah, French Woods. It's always French Woods. Yeah, so this is a performing arts sleepaway camp and Mm -hmm. I, they didn't have room in the theater department for staff, so I said, well, I want to just be there so with my theater people, so I'll teach tennis because I can. Smart. So I did that. So yeah, tennis is is the one sport that I have any experience with, and I still do like to play it regularly. There you go. For exercise. We got into it during the pandemic for a hot second. Really? Yeah. We should play. We I have four rackets. We, we have two rackets. We have our own rackets, actually. Great. But we can bring, but I'll take one of your rackets, too. But yeah, we'll play some. Yeah, time. let's do it. I love it. Let's do it. I'll be here all summer. 
Where do we go? Let's fucking go. Let's have a tennis summer. That's great. Did you play up? Did you play through high school? Um. So I wasn't like playing in school or anything. Mm-hmm. I was just playing be- for, for fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. My brothers are like tennis prodigies. My little brother, um, Corey, he's 18 and he got on the Boston University tennis team. Let's fucking go. So, yeah. So he just graduated. He had prom like this past weekend, but now he's like going to be on the Boston tennis team. Yeah, I that's guess. a no joke. That's a D1. D1? Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm, I, right? I, I believe. Uh, yeah, he got a scholarship. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah so that's um, ridiculous. That's so good. Yeah, he's number like seventeen or something in the country for so his age group. Yeah, so he's really, really talented. Um, and my dad is thrilled of because course. I was never like in a tennis like that. You and me both. Yeah. So you know, I luckily I'm I'm very happy for my dad because he finally gets to live out that dream of having like kids that are super into it uh-huh, because uh-huh. I was not. Um, but I did play. Like I've I've never really stopped playing. Yeah. yeah, I mean I was I they want my dad, he like coached basketball and I was like, I just was so short. I was like so I was pretty good mm-hmm. and like had real potential, but like I just never grew. Yeah, and it was like I was relatable. It's very relatable. Yeah, <laughs> I I never grew either. But were you? But were you tall as a kid and then like just never grew, or were you short the whole way? The whole way short. Because I was short the whole way. Yeah. So like when I when people see me now and they're like you're short, I'm like it's funny because as a kid, if you told me this height at a certain point, I would have been like, oh, I'm, I'm thrilled. Like, That's so. I there was a I'm moment, a giant going into high school. I was under five foot. I mean, I was yeah, which is very hard. Tiny. To make, very hard to make a high school basketball team if you're under five feet tall. <laughs> it is. Really, I can imagine. <laughs> it is not ideal for the coach to see when you come in. Right. And so it didn't really matter what moves I had. Uh, do you watch any sports? Yeah. There's no wrong answers. Um, I don't have a TV. So, well, I have a TV. No, I don't. I don't. (laughs) I don't watch. There are no wrong answers, but there are interesting answers. I don't watch live TV. I have streamers, but I don't. I don't have like a cable. Sure. I straight up said I don't have a TV. That was a lie. (laughs) That was just lies. Sure. You just have the TV that we all have. Right. Nobody has an actual cable anymore. Even as a sports fan, I don't have actual cable. Yeah. So what do you, how do you watch sports? ESPN plus and AB. You just buy the different networks. Yeah. I don't have those apps. Well. But I can, I can, I can talk about sports still. No, absolutely. We've had guests. We, I mean, we've had guests on here that have actively said, "I hate sports." So, to be clear, you're not. Even I'm just going to be constantly explaining why I deserve to be here. No, you don't need to explain. <laughs> We're happy to have you. There's no no wrong answers. Okay, here. great. Um, but you don't watch any consistently. Or really mm-hmm. There's great. There's nothing wrong with that. That's but great. I do like once I am watching. I mm-hmm. love I love going to hockey games. Yep. When I go Hockey's to the Florida, the Florida maybe. Panthers were my team. There we go. So in their heyday oh yeah i'm ready to talk about sports in the oh, 90s yeah, 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 yeah. Momentum going. no i'm getting hold on one second <laughs> <laughs> coffee smart smart so in 1997 when um the Bure brothers were mm-hmm. taking the world by storm i was in it wasn't called incredible ice no it was in i don't even know what the name of the um arena was called but they built the whole new arena in sunrise mm-hmm. and i believe now it's it, it's been like the bank atlantic center and it's been all these type all these center of course they names. changed it right they changed the it. company it's ridiculous it's upsetting it's, it's very hard to keep track sports. um but mm-hmm. i do i i would go a lot with my dad because my dad is from canada so he is like a sure. hockey guy he's a canadian <laughs> florida a transplant who moved from the coldest place ever to the warmest place ever and then just became a tennis pro in south florida i mean vibes but that's also so one vibes and two just the athleticism (laughs) to be able to switch sports to me is always insane yeah no he's and he he still will ice skate occasionally like him and my brother they love to ice skate and practice hockey and like play roller hockey and Mm -hmm. all that so i would say hockey and tennis are probably my two most like familiar sports love that well, we don't have a hockey story today, but what we do have Tell is me. some great stories. We're here to talk about sports. Hit the theme song. Might be a new one. Danny, Danny, he's talking about sports. Yeah. Hit the theme song. Let's go. You're a number one fan, so you know the stats. Heard all the pundits talking, so you know enough of that. Maybe it's time to hear some crazy folks chat about all the other stuff that's behind the net. 
Maybe you don't care about playing ball and you want to hear the gossip where the big goes small. Maybe it's time to hear some funny folks talk about what goes on when the batter don't walk. Maybe you'd like to hear a little more. Maybe you don't even care about sports. Either way, go on and buckle up your shorts. Cause this is everything but the scores with Danny Jollis. Yeah, doggity. And we're back from the theme song. We don't know which theme song it is. Probably an old one, but maybe a new one. We don't know what it'll be. It's but definitely it, a new one that I made. One. I can't wait to. I cannot wait <laughs> to switch it up. We've been waiting for years, but the current one done by Zachary Weber. Shout out Zachary Weber. Um, Carly. Yeah. Our first story is a baseball story, uh, and it is one of the stupidest stories I've ever seen. In my life. I've never had such fun. Tell me about it, Danny. Last week, a baseball player named Tommy Pham, during batting practice, slapped the ever-loving shit <laughs> out of another baseball player named Jock Peterson, just on the field before the game started. Why? So that was everybody's question. Because uh -huh. the video was just like out of nowhere. Okay, so there's footage. There's footage. There's From a far away because nobody's paying attention. It's like during the part of the game where everybody's like, why would you have a camera on? Mm -hmm. it's like they're painting Brad like nobody's paying attention he was out in the outfield like it was just a very random but there's like one camera that kind of caught it and then there's like a ton of cameras of like once people were like something happened so there's yeah. a bunch of those where it's like oh people are running yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but there's like one shot from the distance where you kind of <laughs> just see like but it's a full Will Smith like bam it's a smack it's a smack yes. it is not a light hit. okay and so did we get answers? What happened? So immediately everybody was like, okay, something happened. Yeah. Probably horrific. Mm. Keep in mind, there's a story right now in baseball about somebody saying something kind of racist to another player that like mm -hmm. caused a bunch of trouble. So we're like, Ugh, what is it about? Yeah. And so Jock Peterson comes out and he's like, I, I don't want to talk about it, but. Um, he's the one who got slapped? He's the one who got slapped. He's okay. like, uh, this is over fantasy football. This is over our fantasy football league, and it is totally okay to knock over those. I'm so sorry. No, it's okay. That's Eddie Kingston is his name. Sorry, Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was a slap over fantasy football league. They both ran. Uh, which, for those of you who don't know sports, is a fun thing that we do with each other that I've never heard of anyone getting slapped over. Okay. Uh, he slapped the shit out of him uh -huh. over fantasy football. Uh-huh. And then everybody was like... It was one of these things where, like, the initial slap happened, and I was like, it's not really for the pod. That's not that interesting. And then once it was over fantasy football, I was like, oh, I'm going to learn everything there is to know about this story. We, I have to know what happened. We need to we need to dig deeper here. So I did. And okay. I dug so deep. So basically, <laughs> so Tommy Pham then came out, and he was like, look, it's not about fantasy football. He said something that I found very offensive, and during our fantasy football experience that we were in that I felt the need to respond to. So then I went back to like, okay, there might have been something serious. Then. And then Jock Peterson, and by the way, Jock Peterson, I've never heard talk for it, is the driest, like... To the point kind just of like, guy. And he's like describing it like it is a very serious situation. He's like, yes, I want to talk about what happened in our fantasy football league. And you're like, <laughs> okay, let's fucking go. Dude. Like, <laughs> yeah, fucking <laughs> give us yeah. the tea. Take me into it, buddy. Yeah. He's, but he's so serious when he says all this. Like, yeah. you would think this was an incredibly serious situation. Sure. Uh, but he, he's like, he's like, well, I, I have the thread. So I can show you exactly what I sent. He pulled a Jamie Lynn. He did. I'm crossing pop culture over into your sports What did Jamie podcast. Lynn do? Jamie Lynn was on a podcast and she was showing receipts of text between her and her sister, Brittany. So mm. he pulled a Jamie Lynn. Oh, wow. Yeah. And what did she say? Because that was when she was against Brittany? No, this is when when she she was writing her, she was doing press for her book, her mm. tell-all book that Brittany did not approve. And then she was like, listen, me and my sister are trying to handle this privately. Here are the text messages. Got it. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. So that's what your boy did. That's right. I would have, I would have, uh, if I were to do a pop culture ref reference, I would have done the Kim Kardashian, mm. Taylor Swift reveal. That's true. That was a classic one. Yep. Either way, he pulls it out. The gif is of the team he's on, the San Francisco Giants. It's three bodybuilders. 
There's the San Francisco <laughs> Giants. One well, has the San Francisco Giants, his team. One is the LA Dodgers team. And one is the Padres, which is the team Tommy Fame is on. It is three weightlifters throwing a weight in the air. And then the one who's under the Padres name, the weight falls on their head. Weight? Yeah. Like they throw like, like a... Like a hand weight? Like a dumbbell? Yeah. You know, like have you ever seen like the, the like... Uh, the like bodybuilding competitions where right. they like ch- yeah it's like oh, one okay. of those got it, got but it, he it. throws it too high so it like falls on top of him that was the gif that caused this entire thing he's like i guess i was making fun of the padres because they were bad and i thought that was kind of funny and that got him slapped in, in the, the face. face over that it and sounds like they're all very mature <laughs> I feel like Jock Peterson is very mature. Mm. I feel like he's doing... I feel like I'm in a fantasy football league. That's not even like... I mean, it's... it's it is a brag. You're humble even, bragging. Like, well, yeah, I'm, I'm in a fantasy football league. Nobody else is in a fantasy football no. league. No. Literally anybody... I Jess is trying to get into my... My fiance is trying to get into our fantasy football league. That's how many people play... You play fantasy football? No. Well, You're the comedy king of fantasy football. I really am. Yeah. There's like a couple very competitive leagues mm. that I'm in that are... But there's a lot of trash talk. Like, a lot of... That's, like, part of the fun of it. But no slaps. No, no one's ever slapped anyone over anything. It's a fantasy football league. <laughs> it's supposed to be fun. We stay we stay in the context of, like, we're in a league. Like, <laughs> And it's a fantasy. It's a fantasy. It's not even real. I mean, it's, like, stupid players. That it just makes us so that, like, when our team isn't playing, we can... Or if you're, my, you're me and your team sucks every fucking year, you have something to pay attention to. Who's your team again? Some, the Commanders. It's a new team. So that's... It is the. It was formerly the Washington Redskins, formerly the Washington Football Team. Now, the Commanders. But you know what? They're they're in their startup phase. They're you know they they you gotta have. There's there needs to be room for growth. There needs to be a starting point. Well, what if I told you it's been around for? It's one of the oldest franchises. Oh. We just keep changing the name because it was a <laughs> racist. Because it's oh. But our owner is bad. <laughs> We've talked about this on the podcast many times. Our owner is bad. Oh. Update on that situation. All the owners had a big meeting. This this is their annual meeting, and there was. A lot of hope going in that we might finally remove him because it's been everything. And uh, it doesn't appear it's going to happen. He's How must that stay. guy feel like walking into that room and just knowing that everyone wants him out? I mean, he seems to be. This is about Dan Snyder. Those you don't know sports, the owner of the Washington Commanders, who is the work. Go to my, go to the episode with. Who's our first, who's the who was the episode with that I did that one with? Um Ooh, look it up uh yeah. but <laughs> please because we went into deep dive into this yeah deep dive into just how shitty a human he is yeah he is one of the shittiest humans on the planet oh and, no uh he is just oh. in general or just at his job no he's a bad person like he oh. does like terror he does like uh, sexual i mean just uh, oh, anything no. workplace issues i mean everything everything you could line on taxes i mean you name an issue <laughs> he's, at this point he is impressively evil at everything <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Like, really catches every area in a way that you're like, wow, I didn't know you could, like... Be that that shitty. In that that many ways, like, Mm. without repercussions. Like, it's like, you think one, maybe you get to two, but it's like, he's cheating the government. He's cheating taxes. Uh, And so... Like Lou Pearlman. One of the... Yes. Wow, you really are good at the pop star references. Mm Mm-hmm. It's my brand. <laughs> and that's what we do here. We swing it. And we swing it back and forth. Back and forth. Back and forth. Here we go. <laughs> I'm trying to think if there's ever been a pop star person who swung over to sports, but I don't think it's really happening. Listen, I will find a way to bridge the gap. Listen, that's what, we hear, that's what we're here for. Yeah. This podcast is 50% of the people who listen to this podcast do not watch sports. Well, I will absolutely be bringing my TikTok followers here. Let's go. Yeah. Let's fucking go. Let's fucking go. Yeah. Get the TikTok people there. My TikTok is doing... Okay. And they're going to learn about Dan Snyder. Is the episode, the first video one with uh, Alex Lewis. Alex Lewis. Yes. 15 minutes we spent on, there's a, and there's a, on YouTube, I, if you just want to skip, there's a three minute video I put out that is just like the compilation of everything I list. Mm-hmm. He's the worst person. The most recent thing he did was he, it was revealed that he isn't paying the other owners the money he owes them. Mm. Just isn't like, he's like lying about how many people showed up to the game so he doesn't have to give them the cut. <laughs> And they're still doing nothing about it. Oh. It and, and so they're all meeting and they're like, where's our money? They're, they're all just being like, we hate you. But it's 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 billionaires who are afraid to do anything. So it's like at the end of the day, they'll sooner just keep it the way it is and keep making billions. I think Dan fixes my own. Sure. At this point, it's the only logic I come up with for this guy being around. It's like, yeah. 
You know what I mean? Like rich people just want to keep rich. Rich people, sports politics is a whole subculture. Oh, it's fascinating. Yeah. Oh, I dig into it all the time. All the time. time. I'm like, yeah. who are these owners and what do they get out of this and what do they... That would be a good part for you. I feel like you need to be a sports owner in a series. Let me tell you, the amount of times I've begged to audition for every sports show, including one currently. There's one currently I've been like hammering Get me on. I'm like, please let me audition for this show. I know the story. I know there's like, there's shitty old people. Mm -hmm. Shitty old people have shitty young people who work (laughs) for them. I can be one of those shitty young people. Or kids. Or, who are shitty? Yeah, but I can't play a kid. Oh so, no, know, no! Like they're like they're. Oh, yeah, they're but kids. if they're yes, old, yes, yes, then yes, you so would a be junior. Yes, I could be a junior. You could be a junior. I could be a junior, and their yeah. juniors always junior. work at the company. Mm-hmm. Always, Jerry Jones, his entire family works for the Cowboys. <laughs> He's got a, an empire of Joneses running around. Yeah! Wow, this is this is fascinating. Which, no, I meant it. I did. I, it sounded it sounded sarcastic, but I no, I really just like blacked out for a second. And I was like, "This really is a whole world that I've never thought about." I think people who don't watch sports don't think about sports a lot, and no. so I think that's like the thing is what's kind of fun about the podcast. A lot of time is that people come on and they're like, "Oh yeah, I don't ever think about sports," or like what happens on the or what happens sports. on the box level at oh. any stadium, and it's wild. Box level. That's a show. Oh, that's <laughs> box a show. level. I've been on the box level. I've had a couple of box experiences. Have you? Yeah. It's wild. Well, I at yeah, Florida Panthers games. Oh, sure. I almost only go to the box level. I was I've been boxed for some things and I've been in a box with some very rich people before and I've been like, oh wow. How the other half lives. It's wild. They're ordering endless chicken fingers. Oh, they don't order anything. It's all just there. It's just, they just it's have just a spread. spread. Yeah, and yeah. nobody takes it home to go because they are not poor. When and- I went to the Super Bowl I took 75 programs. I just kept stealing programs. From the yeah, so you could you I could pawn like, them later. I gave them to friends. Friends mm. who couldn't get to go because it's impossible to get a ticket to go to the Super Bowl. That's really I nice. I gave it to a bunch of people who were Rams fans. Who And that's good karma. I try to have good karma. Mm-hmm. So far, I'm yet to get any karma back. But I feel really good about the fact that it's going to come at some point. I don't think you'll ever get slapped over fantasy football. Is that's true. Saying. I think that's what your karma is doing for you i don't think i've ever seen somebody slap somebody over something this stupid in my life (laughs) particularly at a workplace i was trying to think if i've ever seen a fight break out that's this dumb and Mm. i don't have one no no No. it's pretty dumb unmatched but that's really it that's the story tommy fan slap the shit out of jock on camera he got suspended three games there were consequences. There were consequences to his actions, particularly once the gift came out. And it was like, all right, we were sort of giving you the benefit of the doubt that something But now racist, we have evidence. That we thought something racist was said. Like, that sure. was sort of like my, it was like, ugh, he obviously said something racist. And then for it to be like a weightlifting gift, it was like, what, what are we even doing right now? What are we, what are we doing here? I thought we were, I thought we were taking this thing seriously. And these are all adult, adult. These are full grown adults. People. These are full grown adults. These are millionaires. Right. We'll be right back with next story. Oh, hey there. During this break in the action, I just wanted to throw out there that this is the perfect opportunity to write a comment or subscribe, or if you're listening, you can just uh, give us a rating and a thing, whatever you want. Just this is the moment where during this break, since we don't have a Patreon or anything, this is the moment to do something like that. It'd mean a lot. All right, back to the action. He gave you the thumbs up, Danny. Sorry, I don't always pay attention. We're back from me having a breakdown during the break. And now... <laughs> we'll just not talk about it. It's okay. No, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's great. It's good. We're going to be really going for it. I'm mm. on a juice cleanse and I'm miserable. I haven't Fuck, what day are you on? Day four. I haven't eaten food in three days. Oh. Have not, have not chewed a thing in three days. Is it a seven-day cleanse? Yeah. All right, but you're over. You know what? You're past the halfway. I'm past the headaches. By ten, yeah. By tonight, you'll be like, I could go the rest of my life without eating food. I feel, I feel that way. Hardest part for me is always alcohol. Yeah. Alcohol is just like, particularly when Jess isn't in town, I'm just like, just sitting around at night, partying. Like I'm just doing a show, and then I come back here, and I'm like, I guess I just, I guess I just chill with Harper. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're doing fine but it is uh it is yeah i have not eat i have not chewed a thing in four days but between a special and a wedding you can have some ice yeah, maybe toy, after yeah. this yeah it up. yeah it'll be great no you look great you're killing I'm a it big advocate of uh cl- of juice cleanses i i really enjoy them too i think I, my favorite is i mean are you doing the smoothies or it's only juice 
There's a couple smoothies mixed in. There are smoothies, yeah. 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 I have so to have some calories. I get so excited when the smoothie time comes. Oh my god. The, the way you treat a smoothie, you would think it's you're like, not a smoothie. It's like, yeah. You're I'm like, like, oh my God, this is about to be one of the most filling things like, I've ever had. This mm-hmm. 200 calorie yeah. stupid thing. Uh, I do recommend cleanses to people, particularly if you are, we are like pro me cleanse. and you fluctuate in weight mm-hmm. because you... Because can you, life. Can you be on... You can be a little undisciplined sometimes. Listen. And we're working on ourselves, and we're trying to not hate ourselves. But um, because of that, uh, I think cleanses are a great way to un because I'll, I'll reset. Do, yeah, because I can I can have a bad too. My body does. Hate, my body loves putting on weight. Mm-hmm. One of its favorite activities. Sure. Uh, and it's uh, it's loves it. And so <laughs> a bad two weeks, like two weeks of sad, will undo months mm, of work. Mm-hmm. But a cleanse will undo those two weeks. Like I will get back to a place where I'm like, okay, now just try to like. So you're just ping ponging back and forth. A lot. I mm-hmm. ping pong a lot. There's mm-hmm. been times I've done it where like I'm filming something for a while, and I'll like cleanse right before because I'll be like, all right, let me try to look. I want to look, camera. try and look. Yeah. But then you'll also then be on set with Crafty. And I'll put the weight on so fast, and you yeah. can like see the wardrobe department being like, "It's been two days." And he's gained yeah, like and seventy five. Yeah, like, it's like you put in all this work, and then you're like, "But they're the the Cheetos." I mean, I, I have yelled a thousand times, "Crafty on sets." Is Your weakness. Insane. Every time I'm like, every time that I am that I am negotiating to join a show, and they're like, "We only have this much money," and I'm like, "Just cut it down to four meals a day." That the crew gets and I and actors get and we will be fine. Yeah, we, we have set. There's 75 meals during a, a day. Yeah, on set. It's ridiculous. Oh God, just food surplus. It's just so annoying. It's well, when you're not being paid, sometimes it is. It is no, it really story. is. We appreciate meals, but we're not here to talk about food. We're here to talk about sports. Mm-hmm. Next story is from the world of college football. <gasps> Yay! One of our favorites. I went to Florida State. Oh, you know it well. Yeah, I've been to many a game. Oh, of course. You got mm-hmm. to really experience. I'm always so jealous. I never got to like experience that life. Really? Yeah, because I went to NYU. We don't <gasps> have a football team. Damn. That's all I ever wanted. And then I was, it was came down to me and one other guy for this like campaign where we were going to go to every, like every week a college football game. Yeah. And like just do shit there for some company. I think AT&T. Totally. I didn't get it. I was so excited. I was like, "Oh, I'm finally!" Wait, do you do like do you perform your comedy at colleges? Have you done that? Mm-hmm. Have you gone to football games when you've done that? No, because a lot of times when you do a call, first off, yeah, no, Be- for so many reasons. <laughs> <laughs> for those of you that don't know comedy, <laughs> for those of you that don't know comedy, when you do a college gig, you tend to sprint in and out of town. Got uh, it. You don't hang. You don't hang. No. You don't know anybody. <gasps> One time I saw Anthony Jeselnik at FSU and I like ran up to him after and I was like, hi, my name is Carly Craig and I'm going to move to LA and I'm going to do comedy. And he was like, okay, cool. And literally bailed. And he, he was nice for, he, he was nice for two minutes uh-huh. and then needed me to get lost. I mean, I'm very nice mm-hmm. when I do a college. Mm-hmm. Very nice if you hire me to do your college mm-hmm. because between us, yeah. college gigs tend to be bad. Yeah. But college kids tend to not know they're bad. And so if you are just like nice, they're usually like, that was great. Like if you literally just- They're your biggest fan. If you show up and you're like, because sometimes you show up, some college gigs are so great. Also, let me say that. There are times I show up to a college and it is a theater and they're like, the issue is like we're so packed uh, for this show, and you're like incredible. Yeah. And then you'll show up to a college the next day, and they're like, "We forgot you were coming." <laughs> so there's gonna be five of us, and you're like, "That was how the Anthony Jeselnik show was. It was like yeah. there were probably like 15 people there. It's brutal. It was so brutal. And I'm like, you literally are at our um, what did, what do they call it? The annex or whatever the the student union. Mm-hmm. It was in the student union. I would do that. It literally next to like a in a bowling alley. Yes, you literally. Oh, yeah, I would do the student union where they would like people just walking, people just walking through your show. Yeah, and then there's ten people who you're like, I guess I have to make these ten laugh for so long. I'm up there so long. Yeah, horrible. you're up for forty five minutes. The, the first one I ever did, they were like, Oh, we forgot you were gonna okay. be here. You forgot your. Yeah. And I was like, Great. Cool. I had a photo <laughs> one time of just like it was like Danny Johnson. It was just a photo of a different comic. And yeah. I was like, that, Oh, that's oh, <laughs> are you kidding? Yeah, I showed up and I was like, That's not me. Who was it? Oh, I forget. It was some. You gotta figure some that other out. Jew. I have it on my Instagram <laughs> somewhere. Some other Jew. <laughs> <laughs> I remember being like, He's similar. 
But it's not me. But it's not me. It's actively not me. If it makes you feel any better, one time I was doing a show and there's another Carly Craig who's an actress. She spells it with a Y. And a guy came up to me after with a picture of the other Carly Craig asking for an autograph. And I said, that is not me. We also look nothing alike. She's brunette and a little older than me. And I'm like, that's not me. And I was like, but I'll still sign it. And he was like, oh, no. <laughs> and walked away. Sure, sure, sure. He said, yeah. It's, that's a... But anyway, when you, when you go back to colleges, go during football season because you yes. should go specifically FSU. I know. I hear it's the Those best. games, like the... Would just you get the... crazy beforehand? Yes. I was also in a sorority. So it was like partying at the frat were. houses and like, yeah. It was it was wild. Um, And yeah, the... The streets are just packed. You lived my college, the college life I want to live. Yeah. Because I was like, I feel like I would have been good in fraternity. I feel like I have good fraternity. I have, I have good counter. You would have been a Fisa. I have a good like counter bro energy. Yeah. In a way that bros like me. And I also can like also be the guy who's like, hey, we can't actively smash everything in this room. And they appreciate it. I'm not doing it in yeah. like a dick way. So I like, I've always... A lot of my friends are bros, and I really love bros. Cause I'm like, you would have fit in at Phi Sig or AE Phi. Whatever mm-hmm. that means, I for sure. Yeah. Uh, I would have been great. I would have been, and I was like, oh, it'd be so fun. And also, I was such a loser that I was like, oh, just to like have a community of people. But or Sig Up. No, Sig Up. I said I went to NYU, and I was surrounded by theater kids, which are a mixed bag. But <laughs> 100%. <laughs> You're you know. <laughs> preaching to the choir here. You know, it's a mixed bag when you get into the theater I know. World. I'm about to move back to New York. Or not back to New York. I never lived there. But I'm like, I'm about to move to New York. And about, I'm like, I'm just got to prepare. I'm about to be around theater people yep. again. They are. Some can be annoying. But some can be the best. Some can be the absolute best. The best. Some of my best friends. You have to latch on to the ones that have self-awareness. And, and if you time it. Like, that's always my thing with theater kids. Is I'm like, I can take you. For about three hours. Yeah. Doses. <laughs> yep. And then like I gotta go. Yeah. But when I was in it when I was in NYU, I mean we would do these eight hour theater classes and it was just like the end the raw emotion of everybody. So much. The ebbs and flows of energy of just like I don't know, man. I'm just from, I'm from Virginia. Like I don't know Chaos. what we're doing here. Like Chaos. I could just everybody can everyone just show up and do it. Anyway, so college football. Yeah. Is... <laughs> Enough about Chekhov. <laughs> but, oh no, people listen. <laughs> Plenty of people listen to the show who are like, finally, something I can relate to. <laughs> but your time is done. You're back to college, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're back to college football, where specifically, um, I don't know if you know this, but uh, uh, college football now, they are paying athletes. Athletes are able to get sponsorships and make money for the first time. Big deal. We're entering the influencer era, brand deals. Yes, we are. We're entering the influencer era and we're entering the get ahead of it era. Mm. So if you think, if someone's going to FSU and they're like, this guy seems like he's going to be a decent quarterback, sign him. We'll pay him $100,000 right now. Build a relationship with this dude. Endorsements before they blow the fuck up. Endorsements before they blow the fuck up. Also, even if they don't. College football is massive. It's also just an endorsement with a person who is on TV a lot. Like, right, right. It works. But then, of course, the issue is they're going to, since it already was a thing of, like, Florida State, half the players there, boosters, things. There's always been, like, an underground Fun world game. of, like, yeah, I mean, like, you follow Alan I, you know, certain athletes who are there, like, driving around in Escalades when they're in college. And you're like, that doesn't seem practical legal right 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 but special you know, treatment no, they just know they bought it they bought it legally you know it's, not for, it's like sure. art, you know and it's like but it's always sort of been like a wink wink so that's why it was nice that now it's like it can be on the table yeah so um we love vulnerability in 2022 it's 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 uh, transparency open honest we do we're but not we, hiding our endorsements but what do we love even more on this podcast drama Tell me. We love drama, baby. <laughs> who got what endorsement some and who's the, pissed about it? Some of the coaches got a little mad. Nick Saban, who's the coach of Alabama, probably one of the top five most famous. Go, Bama, go, Bama, go, Bama, go. Were you a cheerleader? I wasn't, but I yeah. did go to an Alabama game once. Okay, there you go. So you know their chant. Yep. Uh, Nick Saban's one of the most famous coaches, so he always gets the best players. Okay. Alabama always has the best players. Yep. This year, they came in second. They didn't get the best recruiting class. Uh-oh. Texas A&M did. Uh-oh. 
And so he went out on a press conference and he was like, because I mean, we were second in recruiting this year. A and M was first. A and M bought every player on their team, made a deal for name, image, likeness. We didn't buy one player. All right. So he said that, Shame. which is aggressive, particularly because shots fired. Shots fired. He also said Deion Sanders and Jackson State football paid uh, three million dollars for their quarterback. Which now, granted, a quarterback, the number one quarterback in the nation, going to play for Jackson State is slightly surprising, mm. but. Mm-hmm. Whatever. So, uh, the coach for Texas A&M wants Clap shit. back. Clap First off, we all knew back. it was about to happen because I've never seen them go, he just called an emergency press conference the next day. He was like, emergency press conference. I need to set the record straight. He goes, we never bought anybody. No rules are broken. We never done anything that goes against the laws of the state of Texas. Some people think they're God. Well, go dig into his past or ask anyone who's coached with him Find out what he does and how he does it. Go to dig into how God did his deal. You may not find out about a lot of things you don't want to know. <laughs> now <laughs> this is the sports talk I'm loving. And we all were Wait, like, whoa. whoa. <laughs> From the top row. <laughs> Was that a Marvel movie trailer closing line? Oh my God. <laughs> Piping hot tea. <laughs> Is spilt. Okay, so did we start investigating Saban? What's happening? I mean, it's almost not worth investigating. Okay, because we all know it's true. Sure, we've uh, Alabama gets the best players every year. I don't know. Seems as if there's got to be a reason. It's a I don't want to know that they're getting their top. Yeah, I mean, look, it's 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 all these players. Like again, they get their things and don't want to know. And but. Woo. I have not heard that aggressive a coach on coach fight. And this is Jimbo Fisher, by the way, is the name of the coach. Uh, these are two legends. These are yeah. two legendary yeah. coaches who, in theory, were friends, dropping haymakers, frenemies in tw- in, in a twenty four hour period. Went from like these two are friends to oh, apparently they enemy hate each other. Yeah, and, and one of them is actively calling the other one. The devil, I believe. Is there's what more to this story. There's there's more. They must be in a fantasy football league together. <laughs> God knows what kind of gifts were sent between these two. Exactly. We need the receipts. Uh, f- yeah, Fisher called Saban a narcissist. He walks on water. Uh, uh, you coach with people like Bobby Bowden, coach of Florida State at one point. R.I.P. R.I.P. He's dead. He is dead, but very good that you knew that. Mm-hmm. Uh, you Bob Bowden, you learn how to do things. You coach with other people, and you learn how not to do things. I don't cheat, and I don't lie. If you lied, your old man slapped you on the head. Maybe someone should have slapped him. It was also part of the quote. I mean, we, uh, I don't Someone is suggesting that someone assaults somebody else. Yes. And that they have the right to do so. Yes. Someone is saying that your father should have slapped you. Which is, I would argue, harsh. A little harsh, but is he right? Probably. Mm-hmm. Probably. I, I, I'm I'm one who believes when haymakers are thrown like that, yeah. particularly out of nowhere, yeah. that means that for a long time it's been like a sec- sort of this like secret. And I think it's true. Look, it's a problem with sports is – the problem with Hollywood is we all – there's open it's all secrets. It's hush-hush. There's all open secrets in this town. And until it goes public, we all just go – yeah, that – you know, there's people we both could name off camera who would who we were like – Or on camera. Person, I'm Every single person you talk to is like... Is I'm like, moving, so I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I try not to actively... But there's people who I'm like, who, before you even work with them, everyone's like, oh, they're a nightmare. Right. Heads up, they're a nightmare. And then you yeah. work with them, you're like... It's awesome. it's awesome. Like Catherine Heigl. Like Catherine Heigl, who just like, apparently everybody who's ever worked with her is like, nightmare. She's a nightmare. She's mm-hmm. a nightmare. Yeah. She's mean. She's not nice. Nightmare. And everyone's entitled to growth, Catherine. So if you are if not growing, a nightmare please anymore, please write a, into the podcast. Yeah. But and also explain yourself. But also, I think a big part of growth is apologies, which I've never seen. Um, oh, she's she's never apologized. I don't think so. I know. Uh, I don't think so. Yeah, yeah. If she has, feel free to correct me. I wonder. Yeah. But um, yes, there's people like that who you just like. We all know is like they're nightmares. Yeah. And we all just keep it down because it's like we don't want to be talking about how they're and Catherine nightmares. Catherine Heigl almost gave. Oh, Catherine Heigl only became a public nightmare because she tried to go at Seth Rogen. That's, That's the right. I remember. Out. Yep. Yep. Everybody yep. Everybody kept it. They kept it quiet for years. And mm-hmm. then she came out. She was like, Seth Rogen's the worst. And he was like, 
Okay. Whoa, he's like, actually, <laughs> I'm so cool. You're like, this is yeah. hilarious. Yeah, like, okay, we weren't going to say it, but sort of similar situation here of like, all right, we were going to keep it down, but if you're going to come at me, like, yeah. what are we talking about? Similar situation. I think that that's true of a lot of Hollywood. Everyone, there's sure. people, there's people who I've worked with who I was like, I knew they were going to be suck, and then they were suck, and we knew they were going to suck. Like me. On the donors. Like on the I donors. was a nightmare on the set of the donors. So difficult. It was, listen, it was a huge job. I was the star. A million on the, views in one day. On the LOL <laughs> Network <laughs> series with a million views in the million first in day. day. That's not nothing. So at a certain point, you're entitled to be an asshole. Of course. Absolutely. You have to be. Literally, what choice do we have? Catherine Heigl would tell you the same. But I will say this. And I always say, whenever I talk about this, I'm always like, and then you go to certain sets and everybody is dope. And you're like, let's fucking go. And you're like, okay, this is why I do yeah. this. Because you just have to get through like four years of dealing with nightmare people. And then when you get to the good people, you're like, oh, this is why I've been torturing myself. Right, right. Well, but you still, I mean, it's like, I, I, I do both. I mean, I've definitely worked with some incredible people mm -hmm. lately. And I've worked with some. Not so incredible. Not so incredible. Yeah. And just a lot of people who you're like, you're the laziest human I've ever met. That's a thing I say regularly. Is Minimal like, work ethic. Yeah. Wow, you're the, congratulations, you're the laziest person I've ever worked with in my life. That's why I'm excited to move to New York. I still do. There's lazy people there too? Yeah. <laughs> See, I don't know. I don't live there yet. New York City, plenty of lazy people. I'll report back in a year. You, Yeah, let me know. But you're going to meet plenty of people on set. So you're like, yeah, you're... Lazy. You're just in LA. Mm-hmm. Mm but the comedy scene is great, and there's a lot of great actors out there. But Jimbo Fisher, Nick Saban, <laughs> they play this season against each other in what we can only assume will be an, ax an, an, an actual bloodbath, potentially on the field. But you have been to college football game before. I've been to one. Which in one? In my life. Uh, it was a USC game. It was fine. But I, 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 missed... I feel like that doesn't. No, count. I missed it. I missed it. I missed it. I missed it. No offense to USC, but I feel like no, I you have you have to go to you have to go to a game in the South. I know. I want because that's where they take it so seriously. If anybody wants to take me, I am welcome. I am I am open to the experience. But tailgating. I know. I want to. Oh, it's such a vibe, dude. I know. We'll be right back with quick hits. During this break in the action, if you have a story idea, send it to me. You can email it to me. You can message me on Instagram. You can message me on Twitter. You can message me on yeah, all the ways to send it to me. Send me ideas. I'll shout you out. I like it. I don't know everything. Send me ideas. All right, back to the show. Thanks, Noah. And, <laughs> I try. <laughs> and a shout out to Noah. Everybody loves Noah. He's doing great. Ruined his Memorial Day. And welcome back to the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> don't feel great about it. It's um, not true. Literally this morning was like, wait a second. This poor guy. <laughs> I forgot. What, you had plans to go to the beach or something? I'm sure he's got fun plans. No, I just had a little, little thing. But Danny didn't ruin my Memorial Day. I want the people to know that. All right. It sounds like you had a big thing planned and it no, got I didn't. ruined. Oh. I, j yeah, just a busy day. But but it was mostly, yeah. it, I, I led with the sorry in classic us fashion. Mm. I led with the, hey, it occurs to me it's Memorial Day. And I forgot. I just, because we usually do this on a Monday. It comes out Tuesday. That's our standard operating procedure. Sure, sure. But uh, as he was coming today, I was like, wait a second. Today's not a standard Monday. No. So. And he was on his way. I, I would encourage you guys to um, create some shorts that are dramatic uh, reading of your text message exchanges. Ooh, that could be fun. That would be great. That could be a fun that could be a I'm segment. just, I'm, I'm giving that over to you. I don't even need a producer credit. <laughs> Dude, the caps lock apologies that have happened between us. <laughs> There's been times I've told him things. I'm like, sometimes a guest will beat him here. Yeah. Uh, and I literally am like, they're here. Do not blame yourself. Like, yeah. Oh, and just tip, constantly tiptoeing around each other's feelings because mm -hmm. you both have uh, we care. guilt. We, we do care. Yeah. We care. We yeah. care yeah. about each other. Um, this is a quick hit. These are fast stories. Let's start with this tennis. <gasps> Yay. Tennis story. Stan the man Wawrinka, a Swiss tennis player, uh, started yelling pretty loudly at a judge at the French Open. The other day. The umpire. Very good. Look at that. I got corrected on my... <laughs> she knows sports, people. Know I've ever been corrected before. <laughs> We're cutting that out of the episode. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I like it. I have, like to, it. I have to humble you a little bit before you shoot your special. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, like that's what I need. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. I'm losing so much money. Uh, <laughs> I begin to stress people. 
of <laughs> man losing making this thing. But I relatable. It is gonna be worth it. Bet on yourself. You gotta bet on yourself. You have to bet on yourself in this town. If you don't bet on yourself, nobody will bet on you. So he's yelling at the judge. Umpire. Umpire. He's yelling at the umpire, and uh, which is happens all the time in tennis. People yell. John McEnroe. John McEnroe famously. I'm just you can't a, be serious. Yeah, I'm just Which, how many more there. commercials are we going to have him yell that before? It's like, we got it. Yeah. Like, we've made the bit happen. I feel like they have they have to have retired it, but then just when we think it's not, it's gone forever, you don't they're going to bring it back. If you don't know sports, there's a guy named John Macro who one time yelled, he, he yelled at, umpire, uh, at umpires a lot. And, Often, yep. And uh, he was well, also in Mr. Deeds. Remember when they, they put him in Mr. Deeds? And guess what he did in that? Mm, mm-hmm. You can't. He one time to an umpire yelled, you can't be serious. Slam his racket. It went. It was viral of the time. And now. 90s viral. I think in approximately 27 movies and TV shows and 100 commercials, he yells that stupid phrase. And it's like the first 50 times I was like, ha, come on. Now it's like enough. Do you think he owns the trademark to that phrase? Where's Where's question. the merch? Like, where's how? He must it, have merch. He's definitely. I mean, he's obviously capitalized on that moment. Yes. Well, he he like announces tennis and stuff. I mean, he's he's done quite well. For he, me, yeah, he's but he is absolutely. I mean, he clearly has no shame recreating what is. By the way, a pretty mean thing he. I mean, the umpire was mortified. Right. So either way, so this guy is yelling and pulling a Johnny pulling a Johnny and everyone's like what is he yelling about and then uh, the audio came out and he was yelling that the water was too cold and he and I was like never seen it before apparently earlier he had said the water was too cold that they were bringing him he and must then, have sensitive teeth he had very sensitive teeth and then the second one okay, and so this was he was like I've asked three times for the water to be normal temperature. And it's just like, whoa, I've never seen anyone yell about the water being too cold, which feels like the right thing to be. He's like, it says room temp on my tech rider. <laughs> yeah. He was yeah. I mean, it's like <laughs> yelling and it's over the wa- temperature of the water. In front of the stadium? Oh, yeah. Yeah. At the ump. Yeah, yeah. But why is he yelling at the ump? The ump isn't getting the water. I think, th- I think that the ump, I mean, that's who you yell at. Yeah. It's also like as, they take as, they take the brunt of the abuse. As I want to say, the Venus Williams, the one who yelled at the side, Serena. Serena was the one who yelled. You can't yell at the side people. Side mm-hmm. people are are you're allowed to yell at the ump because that's the person on a tall chair and they're being probably paid a lot. And it's Unreachable. Like, yes, you're you're yelling at the person supposed to yell at. When you yell at like one of the ball kids or whatever, like <laughs> they're well, scared shitless and it's they, like they're scared cry. shitless. And as a fan, you're like, hey, don't yell at them. Yeah, yell at the person you're supposed to yell at. That's like a part of. It's like a very unwritten part. Of it's the it's John like, McEnroe you, standard. Yes, it's like John McEnroe yeah. got away with that because he was yelling at the ump. Yeah, he yelled at the guy you're supposed to yell. You don't yell at a sign. Well, there's person. a boundary there because you're uh, there's automatically a boundary because th- you have yeah. to climb a ladder if you want to get up and slap them. And they can punish you. They're able to be like, yeah. hey, yeah, take away a point. It's like you yell at the sidekick. Yeah, Serena learned that the hard way. Yeah, that she one time yelled at that girl immediately, but it was like, nope, she got in so much trouble. You don't yell at the kids. We almost, we almost canceled a Williams. So, uh, so, anyway, he was yelling about the water. The water. So it was too cold. Too cold. The Swiss guy was mm-hmm. pissed. Next story. Former Oasis star. <laughs> Carly does a great job of wrapping up the story. <laughs> Moving on. So in conclusion, <laughs> cold water. It was. And scene. And scene. scene. Uh, former Oasis star Noel Gallagher. Mm-hmm. God. Got himself in a little predicament. Okay. Uh, he is a uh, he is a uh, Manchester City fan, and he was in a box in the boxes watching uh, the game. And I guess uh, another player, Ruben Diaz's dad, they were celebrating an exciting comeback, and Ruben Diaz's dad headbutted him in the face, and he got two black eyes and had to go get stitches. And uh, did he break his nose? Uh, I think he broke everything. I mean, it sounded like he could not have broke the dude's face harder with a head, this headbutt. Wait, w- and why did he do this? Because they were celebrating. Because it was fun. Because it was fun. A little too much fun, some would argue. Ah! Bam! Your nose is broken. Everything. Your face is destroyed. Your face is destroyed. Oh, no. I know. And it's the Oasis star. Ha- the musician Wh- said that o- he was covered in blood. Oh, Oasis, the band. Oh, yeah, yeah. Got it. They sang... You're gonna be the one that saves me. 
I'm not so wrong. You're my one I threw the harmony in. That was really good. You're welcome. I felt pretty good about the fact that I held. Um, your theme song, I might let you do harmonies on your own theme song. Oof, I got to tell you, don't wouldn't trust me with it. <laughs> don't count on it. <laughs> I don't know if you do that with me, but given that I'm somebody who sings a lot uh, on TV and film, not mm-hmm. a great singer. Mm. Really stumbled my way through that part of my career. But you know what? Now you're considered one of the greatest vocalists of our generation. And now <laughs> you just need some training to back it up and you're... You'll have your own show in Vegas. Genuinely, because of Crazy X, people bring me all the time for musical theater stuff. That's true. And it's like, I can do... So the thing is, like, I do have a musical theater background, and I can do it, but I'm not like you, where it's like, you can just, like, what is it? <laughs> Done. It's like, I have to be like, cool, I need two days. You need to, you need to digest it all. Need you got to rehearse. It. I need to hear it. I need to pump it out on my piano. Get the movement in your body when oh, you're also dances. singing. Oh, when I had to dance for... The choreo. Hey, for anything. Oh, my God. Choreo. But at least you had um, Esther was there, and she is a dancer, right? Oh, well, the choreographer, Kat Burns. Kat, she helped you. She's the best. Oh, Kat Burns is She's like, the best. I want to work with her one day. She's the best. She's the absolute best person on the planet. And Put us in touch. Shout out Kat Burns. I love and her. And I had to have her on the pod. I'm just a fan. I'm just such a fan Everybody. I mean, Burns. you should be. And she's yeah. like, the, and she's, she is one of those who will deliver exactly what you want her to yeah. be. Yeah, rad. Like, Emmy Award winning uh choreographer who could not be a nicer kind of person the way she dealt with me particularly on one song where i had to really dance mm-hmm. the way she just was like she's so good that there were things that i just like would do and she'd be like do it again and be like nope do it again nope and she'd be like do it again and i would she'd be like okay you're naturally doing this that's the move now right and just would literally morph the adapt it she would just to be like, fit go from your... that, and she would just like change the dance into me People think I'm a good dancer, and I'm like, no, no. She literally had to change it for me. Aww. She was the best. I saw her at Black Market once at the bar, and I, I got too scared. I didn't say hi. I would get star. I got. I would get starstruck. She's a. She's a, She's one of these people, uh, who's like a friend of mine. Who it's like for a very select community of people. She's niche. She's niche. Yeah. But she's the coolest. She's so cool. And then for most people, we, uh, I went. Cat Burns, like, call me. <laughs> Cat Burns. I want to work with you. Cat Burns. She will. She will. She's great. She's the best. Great. Anyway, Oasis star. In the face. In the face. Bloody fun. Final story. <laughs> um, <laughs> it was a high school uh, golf tournament. Golf. Uh, in Adele, which I don't know where that is. I forgot to do that part of the research. But um, someplace. <laughs> uh, there was a, a state, state golf tournament. And they... So when you do a golf tournament, okay. they, every round, they move the pin. So the sure. pin placement changes. Yes. That's kind of how they like mix it up on them. Mm-hmm. Somebody moved this pin to like the very top of a hill on the green that could not seemingly be putted in. The average score on this mm-hmm. hole was a quadruple bogey because <laughs> nobody could hit the putt. Uh, Which is like negative zero. It's, oh, quadruple bogey is if they're supposed to, if you're supposed to do it in four, they're doing it in eight. And that's the average score. Okay. <laughs> that is how bad people were doing. Nobody could hit this putt. No. It was impossible. No. It took nine and a half hours for the tournament to finish because <laughs> nobody could do who it. Was in, who was the pin guy? Who was in charge? I mean, somebody who's f- for sure got Who ahead. deserves to get slapped in the face sure or head bedded in two black eyes. Yes. There's a lot of violence in this episode. Yeah. <laughs> we, we woke up and chose violence yeah, on Memorial Day. We did. I mean, Jesus. And isn't that what Memorial Day is all about, in a sense? Mm-mm. Remembering the violence. And it's also the last day of Mental Health Awareness Month. <laughs> that is that is true. And we hope that you're dealing with your mental health the way you should. And not punching people don't in the punch face. People. Don't punch, don't slap. No slaps. No, no phys- headbutting. No physical. I have to have one. I'm like, if you don't do anything physical to somebody, you can do anything. Just yell like John McEnroe. Just yell. Mm-hmm. And That's it. specifically to somebody in a higher chair than you. Well, mm-hmm. Those are up. You're good. Is there it? Uh, That's it? Yeah, average score in that hole was an eight. Quadruple bogey was the average. Took nine and a half hours. Uh, and it was insane. Mm-hmm. And also hilarious when you watch the footage because these girls are just like, you miss it by this much and it rolls like down the hill. So it's like, you just can't hit the ball. And once the pin was there, you got to stick with where the pin is. Nobody was like, we should probably move this As pin. long as somebody's done it, everybody has to do it because then it would be unfair for the people who went early. So I wonder by, do we know by which 
golfer, they were like, this isn't going nowhere fast. I have to imagine. <laughs> That's a great question. I have to imagine pretty early. They were like, we have a pro- probably by the second one. Yes. And I would imagine given that this, they, I'm, I have to imagine the second the whole place was put there, they must have been like, hey, Tom, are you sure? Because <laughs> that's like right at the top of the hill. And he's like, oh, that's good. No, 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 it'll work. It'll no, 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 work. it's good. It's good. We want it. It's a competition. But I guarantee there were some people there who were like, for sure, this, this might be an issue, right? Right. Or like they had to like, they're, they're, they didn't plan on being there for nine hours. Like some people must have missed a birthday or like an oh. important dinner. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Like their also, plans got thrown so off. much light. Sure. Yeah. With golf. That's also a thing that happens in real golf is like sometimes the tournament will go long enough where like. There's no light. They run out of light. They have to like carry over to the next day. So it's like, I mean, nine and a half hours. I, 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 so I, I, so I, the I, pin I, guy just threw it all off and there is a huge gals, inconvenience. These poor gals had the worst day. Dang. 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 All right. We'll wrap it up in a second. <laughs> oh, hey, during this break in the action, I have nothing else to say. I just want to give us a break in the action. Thank you for watching. Keep subscribing, rating. All right. We go. Let's go back. And hey, welcome back. What an episode. It's <laughs> been. Uh, what a delight. Carly. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. Tell the people what they need to know about you. Well, First of all, I'm a sports expert. Second of all, Very clearly. <laughs> I'm the Tromedy Queen of Hollywood and the world's first comedic pop star. And I have a performance of my pop star mental health one woman musical coming up. And it's <laughs> so Fast title. It's a very quick title. It's called Emotional Roller Coaster. <laughs> there we go. That's... <laughs> yeah. No, that was the, that was just the tag. Um, the tag. Got it. Yeah. So my my pop star mental health one woman musical called emotional roller coaster is happening in new york city at 54 below on july 20th Ooh. tickets are on sale right now let's go yes i'm so excited it. it's me and a band and a band is it the same band that did it out here different new, new musicians wow. but they're already hired yeah, they can handle it. We're dialed in. Yeah, <laughs> we're excited. We're we're um. I have I wear uh, shoulder pads with fringe. It's it's a great show. I saw photos and I was like, yeah. that looks awesome. Yeah, I guarantee um you will be entertained and I am excited. It'll be my first thing I'm doing in New York before I move to New York. Wow. Yeah. Noah. So- uh, <clears throat> this weekend uh, is a very very big day. If you have not already, please please. Get your tickets to see Danny tape his special. Yeah. You better do it. Also, hashtag DJ for DC. Hashtag DJ for DC. Um, yes, I think DJ by the time this comes out, I feel very comfortable saying there will be no more 7 o'clock tickets. Uh, so we are just down to 9.30 for the love of God. Do it. Let's fill that one up. Uh, Wait, so you're doing so you're doing two performances do. back to back? Back to back. Amazing. So which one should I come to? 9.30? Uh, unless well, you, you need people. buy the ticket right now. So I would say, yeah, go to the 9.30. Yeah. All right, I'm going to uh, go 9.30. If you don't care. I'll bring the 9.30 energy. Let's bring that 9.30 energy. Yeah. We want that 9.30 energy to be rocking. Yeah, I got um, you. I got you. Yeah, yeah. The 9.30 is uh, the one. But we also, I mean, yeah, it's been very lovely. A lot of people have bought tickets. I am I will say that I am stunned by how many people have bought tickets humbled already. Humbled and I'm honored. Very humbled. I'm very humbled and very honored. It's a lot more than I thought. Like, you know, there was a game plan to selling tickets to this sort of thing. We feel very comfortable, blah, blah, blah. But I'd sort of gone in being like, I think this is how many. I can be responsible yeah. for. Yeah. Because uh, I can sell a dynasty once. We all knew that. Twice is a lot in one night. It is. That's a lot of tickets no. to sell. And uh, But look how far you have come since that backyard been. show in 2013. Look at how far we both have come. <laughs> look at this. <laughs> look, at this. <laughs> look at this. Look at us. Look at us. 2022. No, you weren't there, but in spirit you were. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm here now. But you're here now. And that's what uh, matters. So yeah, so if you haven't yet, uh, 930 show in particular, please buy tickets to it. Buy it's the going tickets. to be something that you've never seen before in a special. And with that, we get to our final part. This is the physical part. This <gasps> is a little thing called Three Shots of Glory. This is how we close every episode. Okay. You get three shots. Okay. From the couch to the hoop. If you're listening, you can't stress enough, this is where the visual part really comes in handy. Yeah. YouTube. YouTube. Tune in. Uh, three shots. Jessica Michelle Singleton. Only guest to hit. Ooh. That was almost... That was bad. It's very light. It, it's it's very a different light. texture and weight than I was expecting. Uh, yes. Okay. So get, get a feel for it. Yeah. For get sure. And she okay. lines up the it kind of looks like a tennis ball. It does. Okay. Oh. <gasps> 
So close. Wow. Very good first shot. Pretty Very good. Very good first shot. Not bad for a pop star. Not bad for a pop star at all. Harper, please. Not Harper. Shut up. Harper, I'm trying to focus. Oh, oh, it's just right to the right. But let me say this. This is some of the best shots we've seen in quite some really? time. Really? These are, these are these are very close. It's the final shot. This is it. No, not to the uh, right. Wait, could I just do a bonus just to see if I can? It won't count for the it won't count. headshot, but just for the shot. Oh. oh, and just to the left. We'll see you next week. You're a number one fan, so you know the stats. Heard all the pundits talking, so you know enough of that. Maybe it's time to hear some crazy folks chat about all the other stuff that's behind the net. But maybe you don't care about playing ball, and you want to hear the gossip, whether big or small. Maybe it's time to hear some funny folks talk about what goes on when the batter don't walk. Maybe you'd like to hear a little more. Maybe you don't even care about sports. Either way, go on and buckle up your shorts. Because this is everything but the scores with Danny Jollis. Yeah, doggy.